I am so excited for today's video. I am in my element. I'm doing a bridal makeup tutorial. A lot of you guys have asked for product recommendations for me to do a tutorial. So I'm gonna do a bridal 2022 look. If you don't know, I actually was a bridal makeup artist for the last four years. I've taken this year off since I just moved to a new city. But bridal makeup is my forte. I feel like I have a lot of good tips. I'm not using any products for my makeup kit, quite frankly, because I didn't want to sanitize them, but I'm using some of my favorite products in my own personal collection to, you know, create a look that I think I would like to get married in again. <laughs> so let's get to it. First things first is skin prep. That's going to be one of the most important parts because not only is this bridal makeup, it's event makeup. So you want it to last a long time and for it to look good for a very long period of time. So for my skin, I have dry skin, so I'm gonna start off with something intensely hydrating. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Charlotte's Magic Cream. This is one of my favorite pre-makeup moisturizers. I think on my clients, I use Embryolisse, so I'll use their moisturizer on my dry skin clients, and I'll use it on oily too, kind of depending on their skin, but if they stress to me that their skin is super duper oily, then I have an oil primer that I use from Embryolisse. Now for me, I don't need to do anything for longevity on my skin prep. I'm just gonna use a nice long wearing foundation. So since I have dry skin, I just want this all to soak in. Now for foundation, I get asked a lot about what is a great bridal foundation. Dior Air Flash is my number one all time favorite foundation. I will link down below the makeup look that I actually did for my own wedding if you wanna check it out. Those are tried and true amazing products. It's more of a pinky rosy look. Today I'm not going so pinky rosy. But another great one is the Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is a classic, classic product. It lasts a really long time. It's more matte. This is gonna last from morning till night of your wedding day. It's one of the best products. But to get that bridal glow that's very trendy, I'm gonna mix in some of Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I really don't know too many bridal artists that don't have this in their kit because it is incredible. And I'm gonna go ahead and mix the Flawless Filter and Estee Lauder on the back of my hand because I want the longevity of the Estee Lauder, but since it is a more matte foundation, I want to mix it in with the filter to give it a subtle, subtle glow. So I'm going to use my fingers to apply this. And by the way, this isn't how I would actually apply makeup on a client. This is if a bride is doing their own makeup. This is what I recommend doing. I'm going to use a damp beauty blender. I'm going to push this into the skin. On my bridal client, I use a mixture of liquid and airbrush, or sometimes I just use airbrush depending on the client's skin. So that's different based on client to client. You know, if the client needs a lot of coverage, a lot of evening, then I will use a liquid foundation or a cream foundation for coverage, and then I lock it in with the airbrush because I feel like airbrush makeup lasts a really long time. You can definitely see the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter Mix, and they're giving us such a pretty bridal glow. This foundation is really matte, but with that Hollywood Flawless Filter mixed in, it gave such a beautiful bridal glow to the skin. And if you're doing your own makeup for your wedding, and you don't want to purchase this because it's so expensive, Charlotte Tilbury does sell these in a smaller size, which might be really nice for you to get it for a better deal if you're not gonna use it every single day. But it's a great product to just have in your collection, period. Okay, next up is eyebrows. So I'm just gonna brush my brows up. One of my favorite products to use for eyebrows is eyebrow powder. I feel like it is a timeless brow look. Depending on what you need for the brows, obviously it's gonna depend on what product you're going to use, but I think powder gives such a natural soft brow look. And I mean, you guys know, brow trends are always, always changing. So I don't like to do to anything too trendy unless obviously the bride or client requests that. I've had a couple clients request the feather brow and things like that, but I just feel like the powder gives a timeless, natural brow look that just fills in with whatever they are naturally working with. So I normally follow the natural shape of the client because yes, we've done the pomade brow, we've done the natural brow, 
we've done the feather brow and we all look back at those photos and we're like, whoo. So I just tried to do the brows in a way where no matter what time period you look back on it, you aren't embarrassed by how your brows look. So I keep them pretty soft like this. And then if there are any extra sparse areas, I'm gonna go in with a brow pencil. This is the Isam Brunette Brow Pencil. It is amazing. I love it because it has such fine strokes. And so for me, where I like a little bit more is at the arch of my brow because that's where it's really sparse so you can really see the powder so I like to go in with a pencil to make it a little bit more sharp and hair like so it's just like that I don't go in with the whole brow you guys know if you've seen me do my brows before if I use a pencil I do the whole brow but I don't know for events and timeless looks I don't always like using that technique okay and then a brow gel that will not do you wrong is the benefit 24 hour brow setter there are so many amazing brow gels on the market that particularly came out in the last couple of years but this one I mean your brows don't go anywhere it's not too harsh of a brow gel but it really does set them in place so I like to brush the insides of the brows up and then out for the rest just to give them a nice shape all right let's move into the eyes now we'll come back and do concealer later because you don't want any fallout to get on your face makeup so my favorite primer of all time is the kaleidos tone activator it gives you some coverage while also helping your eyeshadows pop more it's just perfect so I'm going to get it on a brush and sometimes I don't do this I'm just gonna do it today because my brows are a bit unruly but I am going to clean up underneath the brows in terms of the timeless look I don't recommend doing this but if you like it then just do it I like the way it looks so on myself I'm gonna do it I'm just gonna put that all over okay now for eyeshadows on my clients I typically use Viseart or ABH shadows so I put out some Viseart shadows to use today these are for my personal collection so I just wanted to give them a little bit of use and I think we're gonna do a really clean simple neutral look so this is the Viseart neutral mattes you can get this in a smaller size for a bit more of an affordable price because this is $80 but if you get the smaller size you can get this for $40 and it's an amazing palette not just for bridal just any neutral that you're going to need you're going to love this I'm gonna start off with a BK Beauty A501 and we're gonna go into the cream shade and I just want to set underneath the brow and brighten up this area right here I want a really light bridal kind of eye so I'm gonna take that shade and I'm gonna put it all in the inner corner as well and that's going to brighten up the eyes just like this it will look less crazy <laughs> once we have the other shadows on but that brought a lot of light to the eye hey I'm gonna go in with this shade right here it's about a shade darker than my skin tone I'm gonna use this as our first transition color I want to keep it pretty light so that's why this is only like a shade lighter but this is going to start off that depth to the eye and the reason that I use Viseart shadows is because they are just a foolproof product one of the best mattes in the industry to work with for a really classic look you want to keep the dark colors only in the outer corner I normally blend my dark colors all the way inwards but I'm not gonna do that today so we're gonna start off with this shade right here it's just a typical neutral classic brown and I'm going to place this in the outer corner and I'm gonna kind of go at an angle so I'm placing it out and then I'm bringing it in just a little bit we're gonna blend that out just like this and you see how beautiful that Viseart quality is doing most of the work for us it's really trendy right now to kind of have that cut eye effect. So that's why I'm blending it out. While this is a classic makeup look, I'm still trying to keep it relevant to 2022. Just like that. And it's okay like to get messy with it out here. We're gonna clean that up. Morphe M507 and we're going a little deeper right here. And I'm gonna just circle this even closer in the outer corner, not quite blending it out so much as the last color. 
And you can see we're starting to build that depth out here. And then we're going here. This palette is perfect for that neutral gradient ombre blend. With each shade that gets a little deeper, the area that we're blending it in gets smaller and smaller and smaller because you want the deepest focus to be out here. That typically is what is flattering for most eye shapes. Obviously, that doesn't go for every eye shape, but it's very flattering on a lot of eye shapes. And if you do feel like you want to blend it a little more you can always take that first brush that you use to soften everything we're gonna take the black yes the black and we're gonna focus this on the most outer part closest to the lower lash line so we are gonna use eyeliner later on and we want the eyeliner to blend into this little speck of black that we're adding. I mean, I'm using just the tiniest amount. So we're moving back to the eyelid. I'm going to take this second shade right here. It's a little bit darker than the very first matte shade that we used, and I'm going to use this all over the eyelid, just like that. I think matte looks are so pretty on brides. Most brides want a little pop of shimmer, but sometimes if I just think the vibe is matte, I'll do the matte look. <laughs> and I'll be like, do you want me to add shimmer? There's something so clean about an all matte look that I love, love, love. We're gonna leave it on that in terms of getting a touch of shimmer. I'm just gonna do it to show you. I wanna keep it mostly matte, but I want like a pop right in the center just to bring a little attention to the eye. So this is the Bridal Satin Palette from Viseart. I don't know if they sell this anymore, but I'm just taking a light golden champagne and I'm just gonna pop it literally just a touch in the center. Like that's it just to add a little bit of interest and dimension to the eye. Really subtle sparkle. I mean, this is a satin shade. It's not even shimmer, and I'm not against shimmer. I want to add that. I, I do a lot of looks. I, I like a glitter on a bride, but this is the vibe that I was going for today. Now I'm gonna move on to eyeliner since I'm happy with the eyeshadow. I'm gonna use the MAC Black Track Fluid Line. This is my gel liner of choice on my clients. It's not as black as I would like it to be, but I love the formula. I feel like it doesn't run. If I need it more black, I will put a powder over top. But since I'm going with a more natural look today, I don't even mind that it's not super black. So we want to keep the eyeliner pretty thin, but we do want the eyeliner there to work as a base for our falsies to lie on. So I'm just going to get pretty thin line to run across my upper lash line. I can't talk when I do this, so give me a moment. And then also, this is going to look really great in pictures, tight line. So get it in between each lash. I don't do this on an everyday basis, but for events and photography, you definitely want to do this. So then I'm gonna go in with a tiny, tiny pencil brush into the black, and I'm gonna blend the liner in the outer corner, just a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna move back out to the face. So I'm gonna take a makeup wipe, and I'm gonna clean up the under eye area. This is why I did not do my concealer yet because it cleans up any of the shadow that fell down and you don't want that on your wedding day it will show up in photography so make sure we keep it nice and clean just like that and if you want you can make it into a wing and that's a little bit more trendy i like that look though so i'm not going to do like an intense wing up but i'm going to clean it up so while that dries i want to do a cream contour. Sometimes I'll do this on clients, sometimes I won't. Depends on their skin type and the intensity of the look. For today's look, I want a nice structured face. So I'm going to start off with the makeup by Mario Cream Contour Stick. This is a shade light medium. It's one of my favorites. And since I want that sculpted look, because the sculpted look right now is quite trendy for weddings, so I think that's what I want to do. So I'm going to look at the mirror dead on and where I see my cheekbones I'm gonna put the product in there so anywhere where you can see a slight indentation that you want to enhance put the product right in the area or where you would want that indentation like right here you can get the forehead as well I normally like to do a little bit on the forehead 
Okay, and then we're gonna blend that in. For the Makeup by Mario product in particular, I like to use the brush that it comes with to add the sculpt. Love the color on this, that's why I'm using this. And this cream contour stick is not too creamy, so it actually lasts a long time, especially once you put powder on top. So that's another reason why I'm using this is the longevity that this product has. So it's great, great, great for event makeup. But again, if I'm doing like a classic bridal, very natural, enhanced natural beauty look, I won't do this. <laughs> this is just for if my client really wants a sculpted look and they're happy with the look of makeup up on themselves. Okay, now for concealer, I pulled the One Size Turn Up the Silk Concealer. I love this concealer. I use a whole different range of concealers. NARS Creamy Radiant, you can't go wrong with. I love Armani's concealer. I use Too Faced concealer. Sometimes I'll even use Tarte Shape Tape, even though I personally hate that concealer. I think it provides such great coverage that there are some folks who need that. Most brides, I will do a color corrector. I don't find that I have a deep need for a color corrector <laughs> but the Becca under eye corrector is really nice again I use a few different color correctors Charlotte Tilbury has a great one this particular shade from one size has a yellow base to it which is another reason that I didn't use a color corrector because it kind of color corrects itself right, I'm gonna put this underneath the eyes whatever's left on my sponge I'm gonna use the concealer in other places around my face, particularly the T-zone area, this is going to stop that, oh, she has concealer on look to make it look more natural if you put it on other places of your face. Then I'm also going to put a little bit to lift my cheekbones right here. And I don't do this always, but this is for a more dramatic sculpted look. This is just going to lift everything. And I use this concealer in particular instead of powder because again, I want to bring back the color of the concealer into other parts of my face to create a more natural look. Let's also cream contour the nose a little bit. I like to use cream contour for nose contouring using my fingers to warm it up. And then I'm just going to go straight down the middle. I find that this is the best way for me to do my cream contour. It's really easy to get that straight look down the middle. Then we are going to blend that in. And I know it looks unnatural now, but once we get powder and stuff on, that will make it look better. Because a nose contour looks fabulous in photography. Now it's time to powder. Now powder can be weird. I get a lot of questions about powders for clients. If you have oily skin, I recommend powders. If you have dry skin, I recommend a lighter layer of powders. If you are younger, you can use more powder. If you're more mature, the less powder, the better. I always like a little bit of powder though. I think it's necessary, especially if you have a wedding in the heat, it's good to put some powder on. So if a client is a little on the younger side, doesn't have as much fine lines, I don't like to bake, but I like to do a heavier powder on the under eyes because that actually keeps the concealer in place. So I'm using my Huda Beauty Pound Cake Loose Setting Powder. This is one of the best powders. And I'm just going to press it underneath the eyes. Again, not as heavy of a bake, but I'm really locking in the concealer. If you have more mature skin, like Mother of the Bride or anything like that, I don't recommend doing this. A lot of times with more mature clients, I don't even put powder on the under eyes. If you notice the concealer kind of swimming, just use your fingers and pat it out. I don't set it for that reason. I use a little bit of setting spray to set the under eyes, like on a sponge or something. But when you lock in powder like this, it really does help with longevity. And this powder really does a great job of hiding pores and all of that. Do you see how smooth my skin looks? And then for the rest of my face to set, I'm gonna use just a touch of the Nabla Smooth Pressed Powder. And I'm not gonna put this much places, but I love this because it smooths the skin as well. So I'll put it like right under here where I want everything to be skin toned and I'll put it in my T-zone area, like right here where I have a lot of pores and then up here. And then that's all I'm doing with this powder, but I love the way that this powder looks, which is why I finish with this. I'm doing just a touch of powder bronzer. We did most of the contour with the makeup by Mario, but for event makeup, I do want to set with powder because we want this makeup to last a long time. I'm using the Tom Ford 
Glow Bronzer in Terra. This has a little bit more warmth in it. The Makeup by Mario isn't warm, but it's not extremely cool, but it's more of a contour shade. I definitely want something a little bit warmer to set on top. And I'm just using a very light amount. It's going to stick to the cream bronzer, so you don't need too much, but just enough to add a little bit of warmth back into the face. Now, if the bride is going for like a beachy bronze, then I'll use more bronzer. But if we're going more sculpted, we don't need too much bronzer. That still was a lot though. And then blush, have to go with hourglass. I actually did pull some cream blushes. If I have a client who's very oily or extremely dry, one of the two extremes, I actually do like to use a cream blush because they will hydrate the dry skin or I'll use a cream blush and then a powder blush on top for longevity on somebody with oilier skin. I don't think I'm gonna use that today because the look is a little bit more sculpted. I don't need as vibrant of a blush, but if I do need a vibrant blush, cream blushes are your best friend. I think we'll keep it a little bit more natural, but you can't go wrong with Hourglass blushes. I pulled the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Edit Universe palette that came out over the holidays, and I am going to use a mixture of these two blushes. I like the Hourglass Glass blushes because they have a beautiful bridal kind of sheen to them that's still really natural and looks amazing in photography. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that right here on my cheeks. This is a BK Beauty A507, by the way. And then get a little bit in the center of the nose to kind of bring everything together. And that brings the face to life. Now make sure you over apply blush because you're doing a long event. Blush fades. It's one of the first things to fade on your face. So you want a little bit more than you're comfortable with to start. It also gets very drowned out in photography as well. And then I'll do highlight after I finish my lower lash line. The lower lash line, I'm gonna start off with this light shade right here, the second shade. I'm gonna focus this on the inner half of the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go in with the lightest shade. I'm gonna focus this in towards the center, kind of where you would put an inner corner highlight. Okay, now we can start with the depth. I just wanted the brightening shades down. So I'm gonna take the shade right here and I'm gonna focus it in the outer third of the lower lash line. And then we're gonna deepen. And just like with the upper half of the eye, the darker the color, the less surface area we wanna give it. And then finally, just a touch of black. Okay, let's do highlights before we move into lashes and whatnot. Again, Hourglass. This is the Ambient Highlight Palette. This is the Strobe Light Formula. So these are a little bit more metallic. I don't normally go super metallic with bridles. Sometimes I go with the softer highlights that Hourglass has. Love my Hourglass palettes. They have softer options in their palettes. But I feel like since this look is quite matte, minus the blush, I want to have a pop in highlight. And pop and highlights are out for 2022, but I think they look really nice in photography. So I'm gonna go in with the champagne shade and I'm just gonna focus that right on the high point of the cheek, just like that. So that way in photography, even though I have quite a matte base, there still is gonna be something to pop. Unless obviously sometimes the all matte look is what we're going for, but I'm not going for all matte today. I'm also gonna take some of that same highlight and I just want to put it on the inner corner of the eye to lift that up as well. And then before we get into lashes, you want to set your face. I'm using Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Setting Spray. I also like the Urban Decay. Longevity is key here, so I'm gonna spray my face. If my bride's skin looks a little thirsty before I do the setting spray for longevity, sometimes I'll do something more hydrating like MAC Fix Plus, I'll let that dry, and then I'll finish off with a spray of this. Personal opinion here, but I think that eyelashes are one of the most important parts to wedding makeup. So I'm gonna start off with mascara. This is not waterproof, but my number one tip for you is to use waterproof mascara <laughs> for a wedding. This is the Patrick Tao Major Volume Mascara. So I'm gonna pop this on. I'm gonna focus it mostly on my lower lashes and we'll do the falsies. The perfect bridal lashes. This is one of the most important parts of this video. You need to look in the Ardell Naked section. The best for bridal looks. They are natural, but they add the volume. So my favorite for Something a little bit more natural, but still dramatic enough to lift the eyes are the 424 Naked Lashes. 
for like mothers of the bride or somebody who is not as comfortable as false lashes, I try and convince them to wear 420 because you know, sometimes clients don't want to wear falsies and I'm like, let me just put this on your eye because the lashes make the look, right? So 420 is great if you're not comfortable with lashes 424 to amp it up a little bit more. So I love these because they look so natural. They literally look like lash extensions. You know, falsies, even though I love a good dramatic lash, they're more of a trendy thing, you know? Especially if they're too big. So we wanna keep it timeless. So something like this is going to enhance the eye, but add the drama. So I'm actually gonna pop these on off camera and when I come back, you're gonna be like, a new person, a whole different look. See, lashes are game changer. These are still natural enough, but they still give a little bit of pow and attention to the eyes. Now for lips, I'm such a huge fan of a pinky lip for bridal look, but I didn't wanna go quite so pinky today since the look is so neutral. So I pulled out the Huda Beauty Lip Contour in the shade Honey Beige. This is a little bit more neutral than what I typically do, but I think it's gonna complement the look a lot. So, and this has a little bit more peach to it, which I think it's gonna go with my blush. I am gonna slightly overline the center of my lips, but again, the big lips overlining trend is a trend, but we do wanna be a little bit more pouty in the center. Just like that. So just like that, that's perfect. And with lip liners, I do actually recommend covering the whole lip because if your lipstick fades, at least you have a second layer. And then on top of that, I pulled the Milk Makeup Lipstick in the shade Skills. It's kind of like a neutral peachy shade, which I think it adds enough brightness to the lips, but it still stays true to the neutral look. Just going to. And then let's do a gloss. I'm going in with Sunset Rose by Pat McGrath. I wanted to add just a hint of rosiness, like a hint. I don't want a rose lip, but that gives the perfect amount of rose that it needs, and this is also my favorite lip gloss formulation. This is a makeup look. Let me take my hair pins out, and I will show you the final bridal 2022 look. All right, you guys, so here is the bridal makeup look that I came up with. I like it because it's classic with elements of something more modern. Like we have a little bit of a cat eye going on. We have a more structured look with our contouring, but it still is using those timeless classic colors. I love doing bridal looks. I miss doing bridal looks. This just makes me want to film more bridal makeup looks because I am super into this look. When I wear like kind of a bridal style makeup look, that is when I feel my prettiest. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it helpful. If you are getting married, congratulations. Let me know if you use this tutorial to help you out. I would love to hear about that. Thank you so much for liking this video and being subscribed to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.